So you've downloaded and installed CodeBeamer from our website or registered for a trial version online and want to start working with CodeBeamer. Here I am on my personal wiki page, which is my home page and what I see after I first logged in. I can click on the projects tab and I can see all the projects that I'm a member of and that I'm working on. And I can create a new project by clicking on the new project link here. Here I can import additional project settings or contents from a file, like a project template file or record file. I can also choose a project template that I have enabled from other projects to base this new project on. I'm just going to choose none and click on next because it's going to be a completely new project. I have to give it a name. I can give it a short textual key and a category. I'm going to leave those blank and click on next. I don't have to specify any source code and I won't be specifying any right now. And now it will create a blank project. It creates a personal wiki page and creates basic trackers. Custom requirement specifications, system requirement specifications, and so on. All of these are created automatically when creating a new project. I'm going to go into my customer requirement specifications. As you can see, the hierarchy and the document view is completely empty. So I'm going to import a Word file and move on from there. I'm going to click on More, click on Import. And here I can drag and drop files here from Microsoft Word, Excel, or Project. Or I can click on Attach a file to browse through um, files. I'm going to choose a medical safety requirements document, click on open, click on next. And here I can set my import rules. Import rules are based on headings, so I can define them into the hierarchy based on these headings. You can see here on the left hand side what the hierarchy will look like, and everything that is specified with this green light bulb will be imported and the gray ones will not. If I want to import them anyways, I'm just going to click on this one here and click on this tab here and turn it green. That means these will be imported as well. Okay, as you can see here, heading one character will be imported into the current tracker. So I'm going to start specifying the import rules and I'm just going to import them all into the current tracker. Heading 1 will be imported into the current tracker, but I could just as easily import them into a different tracker. Heading 2 will be imported into current tracker as well, which is customer requirement specifications as I can see here. And heading 3 will also be imported into the current tracker and I will go on from there. I can see the statistics down here, so 129 items will be imported into the current tracker. I can click, click on save, and it will process this information and import everything into custom requirement specifications. And as you can see here, it has the hierarchy set up just like I saw in the import rules, and I've got my document set up right here. Now I can really easily start working and moving forward by creating system requirements and deriving them from customer requirement specifications. So if I have a programmable pump rate customer requirement specification, for example, I would just click on it in the hierarchy if I want to derive a system requirement from that. And I will click on this plus sign and click on demo project 5 system requirement specifications. Once I click on it, that will open this pop-up window and I can create a new system requirement from here. I can specify different information, business values, nice to have, add risks, complexity, assign it to teams and releases, and users as well. Now in the description I can add what this is a refinement of, for example, so refinement of programmable pump rate, and the summary is auto-populated and the subject is also, also auto-populated. As you can see here, it is populated by this customer requirement. 
So it will be automatically attached or related to this programmable pump rate through the subject field. I'm going to save this here. And if I go into my system requirement specifications, I can see that this has been created very nicely. If I open my relations on the right hand side, I can see that there's an outgoing reference, meaning it is related to this custom requirement specifications. And if I click on it, I can jump back into that uh, edit view of the original custom requirement specifications. Now I can just as easily derive a test case from this system requirement. So I go back into my system requirement specifications, choose the re requirement I want to derive the test case from, which in this case is the only one I have, and click on the plus sign and click on test cases. Once again, I receive this pop-up window, verifies it's auto-populated with the system requirement, creating the relationship and I can specify different types of information here, add the description, this is to be tested whether the programmable pump rate works fine. Save. And now if I go into my test case tracker, I can see that this programmable pump rate test has been created. Now if we want, I want to follow this in the traceability, I will go back into my custom requirement specifications and click on this tab here or I can click on more and select the traceability browser. Since I've started up my custom requirement specifications I'm going to add my system requirement specifications by clicking on the link from this list and as you can see it has already started to create the table and I will add another column called test cases. And if I scroll down, I can see the relationship between the items that I've just created. So I have my programmable pump rate custom requirement specifications and a system requirement specifications and a test case. And it's just as easy as that. It's really easy to track the relationships, really easy getting started and creating requirements and test cases. And one last thing I want to show you is how you can add members to a project. If I click on this Members tab, I will go into the Members screen. And I can see all of the members in this project. And I can drag and drop them into whichever role I want to put them in. Also, I can add new members here by clicking on add new member and I can start typing a username and then I will also have to choose a role in which I want to put them in and then I can click on add and it's actually just as easy as that that's how you can get started with CodeBeamer very simple thanks for your attention